Hi, I'm Melissa Mortensen from polkadotchair.com and I am excited to be here in the Fat Quarter Shop Studios with you today showing you how to make the house blocks from our Let's Stay Home Quilt Row Along. Uh, the house blocks are in the second row of the quilt and the house blocks are constructed a little different way. They are foundation paper pieced. Um, when I was designing the pattern, I went back and forth between having the blocks be traditionally pieced and being foundation paper pieced. And I noticed that as I was working, when I was dealing with um, kind of like smaller, skinnier pieces, as hard as I tried to be careful with my pressing, I, they were getting distorted. And I didn't like that because I wanted the houses, the piecing on the houses to look precise. So I went ahead and I did a version that was foundation paper piece and I was really happy with how it came out. One of the things I like about foundation paper piecing is that it's really easy to fussy cut your fabric, which means you're choosing like a certain part of the fabric that you want to show. So for this um, particular block, I wanted that little fox to show on the door. And since there's not a fox in every part of the fabric, I was able to see the pattern and you'll kind of see as I get going how that works so that I could get exactly the part that I wanted in the block. And same thing with like the little dogs. Like if there's like a certain part of your fabric that you want to spotlight, it's super easy to do with foundation paper piecing because you can see exactly where the fabric's gonna lie before you even get started. So before I get going, I will say there are lots of different ways to foundation paper piece. This is the way that I found that I like to do it. If you've not foundation paper piece, this is a beginner foundation paper piece pattern. So you, it's a good place to start if you want to try it out. The quilt has six of the larger blocks and then four of the small house and four of the tall house. So it's not that many blocks. The pieces are big. Um, it's a good way to kind of try things out if you're interested in it. A couple things you need. You need to print out the foundation paper pieces from your pattern. Um, they're on the PDF. And you need to, so the thing with foundation paper piecing is you need a piece of paper for every block. So you're not going to use the paper more than once. So if you want to make four tall house blocks, you need to print four of the patterns. So you need to do that. You can print it on regular paper, like that you just use on your printer. I started using a little while ago um, paper made just for foundation paper piecing. And I really like it. I, the, it folds easier, it tears easier, your fabric kind of sticks to it a little bit better, and um, it's made a big difference for me. So if you want to try that out, that's what the foundation paper looks like. So go ahead and print off your foundation pieces, your paper. And then what I like to do is, because your paper's you know, eight and a half by 11, I'll go through that and I'll cut the pieces out just using an old rotary cutter and I'll just kind of cut them out closer to the edges. And you'll see on your foundation paper, there's a couple things. So there's a lighter outer line and then there's a thicker inner line. So the thicker inner line is what's gonna show on the block. And then the lighter outer line is the seam allowance. So this pattern already includes seam allowance. The other thing you'll notice is they're labeled A and B and C. Um, the smaller houses just have two pieces, so they're A and B. So you'll have A, B, and C. So you need to make sure you have an A, a B, and a C for the tall house, just an A and a B for the other ones. And then what I've done, because you technically don't have to like cut your squares before your foundation paper piece, you could just like start with your scrap pile and do it. But I found it to be a lot easier if you're a little bit organized before you get going. So what I've done is on the pattern, I've given you, so this is C1, and it says three by three. It is the recommended paper, uh, piece of fabric to cut before you paper piece. It's not how wide the square is. It's the piece of fabric that I think you should start with. And what I've done is, so that you're not cutting a whole bunch of crazy pieces, is I tried to keep it like pretty consistent. So like you'll see there's lots of two by three pieces, lots of three by three pieces, four by five pieces, just so that when you're cutting, you can be like, oh, I need 10 three by threes, and you can like super fast, like cut it out. So that's what those measurements are. But if you're used to foundation paper piecing another way, like stick with the way that you're used to. 
I think it's really important to stay organized because you're gonna end up with like stacks of stuff and there's a lot of like trimming and waste and if you're not careful, you're gonna like throw away the wrong piece of fabric. So what I usually do when I get ready to do it is I will go ahead and pre-cut my pieces and then all the pieces I need for this particular block, I'll put together and then I just clip it and then I just make, so you can see here, I've just got a little pile that I work from. So I know I can just like pick up this piece in the pile and work on it. And then when I get to the end, I've got all the correct pieces and everything. Before you start foundation paper piecing, there are a few supplies that you need that are a little bit different than what you might normally use for quilting. I like to use a light box. You don't have to use a light box, but I do like to use one because especially if you want a fussy cut, it helps you see exactly where the print is on your fabric and where it's gonna line up. Um, if you don't have a light box, then you can also use like a window or a bright lamp or just kind of hold your fabric up to the light so you can kind of get an idea because the thing that gets people lost about foundation paper piecing is that you are working upside down. So you don't always see your fabric, but once you kind of get in a rhythm of it, you'll be fine. Um, the other thing you're gonna need is an add a quarter ruler. What it is is it's a ruler that has a little lip on the edge that is a quarter inch. And what that does is it helps you to cut an accurate seam allowance, which will make sense in a few seconds. Then you're also going to need either some light quilting pins or a glue stick. And then when I do it, I like to work with a smaller rotary cutter. Then the last thing you need, I use just a piece of cardstock. It's just a piece of cardstock I cut in half. You can use like a postcard from a mailer. If you get like one of those waxed mailers, you can use that. Just something that's like a nice folded edge that's not really thick. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start. So we are going to make the small house block. And I'm gonna start with my pieces. I've gone ahead and pre-cut the pieces based on things. Put this so I can see it. Okay, so what we're gonna do, on the pattern, you'll see one, two, three, and four. So that's the order that you need to work in. So we're gonna start with one. You also notice like here's the dark line, here's the light line. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your fabric and you're always gonna have the wrong side of the fabric facing the wrong side of the foundation paper. And you're just gonna put it down and then you're gonna come and you're gonna put this on here and this is where you can fussy cut. So like if I wanna make sure this little dog um, gets put on the fabric or I can turn it around. And just remember, like you can see the quarter inch seam allowance down here but you can't see it on the sides. So you just need to make sure that you've got a quarter inch all around, so you would never wanna do this because then you're not gonna have a seam allowance. That's, that's not gonna work. So you just kinda eyeball it, and like I said, I've kinda, I've given you a little leeway with the fabric pieces, so I'm gonna kinda move it just so this little dog right here doesn't get cut out of the picture, or the door. Okay, now there's two options. Um, if you want, you can take like a tiny little dab of glue and put a dab of glue right here on the wrong side of the fabric. If it's a small amount, it's not gonna like make a big deal. Um, I usually just use pins. And then you just wanna make sure that this fabric's not gonna move. So we're gonna start between B1 and B2. So I just need to pin piece B1 in place so it's not gonna move around. And so that it's out of the seam allowance, okay. This pattern is not like super particular, so if you're off grain a little bit, it's not gonna make a big deal. As you get into more foundation paper piecing patterns, if it gets off grain, um, like meaning it's kind of like diagonal or sideways, then it will start causing problems with pulling, but this one's really straightforward. Okay, so I've got that pinned. What I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put my light box aside, and I'm gonna get out my piece of paper, and on the front, I'm going to come in and I'm going to put this piece of paper on the line between B1 and B2 and I am just going to keep that there and I'm then going to fold this back just like that and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my add a quarter ruler and I am going to put the ledge of the ruler right up against that folded edge and then I'm going to come in and I'm going to trim that off. Okay, then I'm going to pull this away. Then I'm gonna take the fabric cut for B2, and I am just going to place it on top of the B1 fabric along the edge that I just cut. So, just, just like that. 
then I'm just gonna pick it up and I'm gonna move it to my sewing machine. Okay, so on your sewing machine, you need to go in and you need to set your stitch length to a short stitch length. So you need a stitch length, I usually do a 1.5, um, because you need your stitches really close together to perforate the paper so the paper pulls off really easily at the end. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I just go in and I make sure my fabric didn't get folded over or anything while I was moving it. And I always put the needle where I want to start. So I always start with the needle down. I'll put the needle down. And then I'm just gonna sew on the line between B1 and B2. And you'll see that the pattern notes I'm gonna sew into the seam allowance. So just make sure you don't forget to sew into the seam allowance. And I'm just gonna come here and sew. And then cut that off. Okay, after you've stitched your seam, then you need to press it. Um, I will say a little bit like with the setup, I have it set up on my table so I have a sewing machine, I have my cutting mat, and I have my iron all close by. Because if you're doing this and you're like standing up and sitting down and standing up and sitting down, then you're not, you might not love it. But if you have it so you can just kind of all just sit in one spot and do it, then it makes it a lot easier. So now we've got here, we can go ahead and pull out the pin because you just need it to hold down that first one. And then we're just going to come over with the iron like this and just going to press that seam just like that. Okay, now what we need to do, I'm going to go ahead and move the ironing board out of the way, is we're going to do the same thing between B1 and B3 because we did two, so now we're going to do three. So we're going to take our piece of paper. Maybe, <laughs> there we go. Put it on the seam, on that line between B3 and B1. And come over here, use our add a quarter ruler. Trim that. Okay, now this is where I like foundation paper piecing. So we have stripes. Um, probably not likely to make it perfect, but since you know where you're gonna sew, and your piece is a little bigger, you can come in and put this so that that stripe is continuous because like I would, so if I put it there, it's gonna come across. If I put it there, then the stripe on the sides of the house is gonna be different. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this even with that cut edge and then I've got a little wiggle room, get that as close as I can there and then I'm gonna come over to the machine, I'm gonna sew again. So you're gonna take it to your machine, make sure my stripes are lined up and then I'm gonna flip it over and again, the seams extends into the seam allowance. So I'm gonna start, put the needle where I wanna start, make sure my fabric's down, and then I'm just gonna stitch. And then I'm gonna take it back over and I'm gonna press it again. Pull that up. And just keep it straight and just one real quick press up, press down. Okay, so now, same thing again. Let's flip it over, and we've done one, two, and three, so now we need to do four. So we're gonna do this line, which is this line between B4 and the other ones. Same thing, pull it over, flip it back, trim it so I've got a straight edge there. Okay, and then we're gonna put the stripe down and I'm gonna line up, just to get it as close as I can, like I said, it's probably not gonna be perfect, but just get as close as I can, I'm just gonna put it so that the stripes are on top of each other, and then I'm gonna come over to the machine again. Needle down. I'm gonna bring it back over, and then I'm gonna press it again for the final time. So I like to press it first and then just use my fingers to fold it up. And then come in and just hit it once. So we've got the block here. So we need to turn it over to the other side and we are going to trim it along the outside lines. I like to just use a smaller quilt ruler and do not trim on the darker line or you're gonna have to start over again. You wanna trim on the outside line, which is a quarter inch from the inside line. But you don't have to measure it because I already measured it for you. And then you're just gonna come 
and you're gonna cut along the outside on all four sides and then you have your completed section. So you're gonna do that for all the small house blocks and then the tall house blocks, the bottom pieces go together just the same way. There's just another section of it, but it's the same technique that you're gonna do for this one. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and move on to doing the roof pieces for the small and the tall house blocks. So you can see this is the roof piece. Uh, it's a flying geese block if you're familiar with that, but we're gonna foundation paper piece it just so we get our points just right. Um, so I've taken the piece for that and I've got all my pieces here. This one we're gonna do a little bit different way because normally if we did it the way before, we have a diagonal line here and you know normally I would put the fabric like this but then you're gonna end up with a really big piece of fabric. So I have kind of like a little cheater way to do it so you don't need as big of a piece of fabric. So we're gonna start with our fabric pieces and same thing, we're gonna go ahead and grab our light box. Got the fabric wrong side up and you just wanna center, I usually, for, so for this one in particular, just so I can see where I'm working, I'm gonna put the bottom edge of the piece of fabric on the bottom edge of like the outside lighter line of the pattern. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin that there. And then I'm gonna start between A1 and A2. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna flip it over. I'm just gonna put this on right here so I can kind of see it. So I know everything's like lined up, it's gonna cover and kind of see it comes to here it's going to cover that line pick up our piece and we're going to go ahead and move to the sewing machine again okay. put the needle down and we're going to stitch on that diagonal line so for doing it this particular way instead of trimming first so that you don't need as much fabric we're going to trim after we sew so we're going to pull this open pull the pin out and then I don't need the um, piece of cardboard because I've got a stitch line. So I'm just gonna fold along that stitch line right there. And then I'm gonna use my add a quarter ruler. Get that lined up right there on the edge. That there and then discard that piece. And next I am going to go ahead and press it. Same way, usually just set it first. And then I'm going to flip it up straight, being careful not to, because that's on the bias. You don't want to distort the fabric. And then like that. So we know this is the bottom. So we're just going to go ahead and line that up with the bottom, because you know it needs to stitch all the way to there. So you need to make sure you have fabric all the way down to that line. So if I've got that straight, then I know I've got enough fabric to go all the way down. And then we're going to move over to the sewing machine again. Then we're gonna go ahead and flip that over, fold it on that stitch line, that, trim it, bring it back over, fabric side up again, and then press it one more time. Just up and down. And we have another piece on top of this, so there's no stitching into the seam allowance. But you can see, as you know, if you've made a flying geese block before, that's like your points are just spot on, which is why I like the foundation paper piecing. Okay, so then last step is we're gonna go back to just traditional straight line between two sections. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my um, piece of paper on that line between A4 and the other sections, fold it back put down the ruler, trim it, okay, and then I'm going to take my piece of white fabric, the one that I cut for that section, place it across, and then I'm going to go move her, just stitch it, just straight stitch. And then last step, we just need to press that seam. Press that down. Go ahead and flip it up. Keep it straight. Just hit that seam once. 
and then you're done with the top of your block. So the last thing you have to do is just go ahead and trim around the corners. Okay, to finish your small house, you want to join the pieces you just stitched. So we've got section A and section B, and we're just gonna sew them together. Um, you can rip the paper off before this step, but I've done it both ways, and I feel like it's more accurate if you rip it off after. So I've got section A and B, and I'm just gonna place them right on top of each other. And then I do go ahead and pin it, just so it doesn't move around. And you're gonna stitch it with a quarter inch seam allowance, which is actually marked right on your pattern. So you're just gonna bring it over the machine and we're just gonna stitch on that line. thing you need to do is just come over and you just need to press this seam and then you have your completed small house block and then the tall house is stitched together the same way and then the large house I'm gonna show you a trick with getting like the chimney and everything lined up next for that I did it this way so that you don't need as big of a piece of fabric when you cut it so what I've done so far just for prep work is I have stitched my A1, A2, A3, and A4 pieces. So I've got it just like that. Now, what I'm gonna do is take the roof piece, and sometimes I get mixed up when I'm doing this, um, so I will put it down and kind of like visually fold it over to make sure it's like I want, because some of your fabric might be directional. So if you were like cutting this with like the wellies print, you don't want your wellies to be upside down. And so I always forget like which way to flip it. So if you're not sure, go ahead and just put your fabric down and hold your hand in place and flip it over and you'll be like, okay, that's how it's gonna look when it's done. Okay, so this piece gets put just like this at the bottom of the paper and over to the edge. Okay, so I'm gonna pick this up and I'm gonna go ahead and move over to the sewing machine. Okay, so I'm stitching between all of A1, 2, 3, and 4, and A5, because 5 is next, and I'm just gonna start down here in the corner. And then I'm gonna stop at the point. I'm not gonna, I don't wanna stitch into the seam allowance yet, because I won't be able to cut it. So I'm gonna stitch there. The same as we did for the small house roof line. We've already got a stitching line, so we don't need the paper. So we are going to use our add a quarter ruler, put this here, and then we're gonna trim all this extra fabric off. Set it aside. Then we're gonna flip that back over, and then we're gonna press this seam really quickly. Put that out of the way, that's our next piece. I just like to make sure I'm not pulling on it. That it looks good, it's straight up and down, because it's a bigger piece of fabric. And just hit that once. Put that aside. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the other piece. And I've cut, I've had you cut this piece of fabric so that it just fits on there. So you don't have to worry like with the light box if you got it in the right spot and stuff. So it just fits right on top of there. And then we're gonna come over and we're gonna stitch the seam down now. Okay, now with this one, you're dealing with a lot bigger pieces of fabric, so I do kind of come over and make sure everything is flat, that I didn't get something like folded over as I was moving it. And then we're gonna stitch here. And then where it's noted, we're gonna stitch right into the seam allowance. Okay, after you've stitched that, then we're just gonna go ahead again, and we're gonna pull it over to paper side up, fold that back and trim off this excess fabric and then come over to the iron and again it's on the bias we're just going to be careful that that gets folded out and press that down and then you are done with the block. So the last thing you have to do is just come around here and trim around the lighter outside lines. And then you're gonna, this is, so this is the top of the tall house, but the large house. And then you're gonna do the same thing. This is the large house, the bottom section, which is the same as the small house. It just has a couple extra pieces on the side. Trim it 
um, put them right sides together and stitch along the line and then you're done. And then I'll go ahead and show you how to pull the paper out. After you've sewn all your blocks, I like to wait and do it until I've sewn all the blocks just because I can like sit on the couch and do it. Um, you're gonna pull the paper off. And I have found there are a couple tricks um, to getting it off easy. Start with the bigger pieces first. And cause like at first I would try and pull this little piece off on the seam allowance. And I was like, oh heavens, that's like such pain. So if you start with the bigger pieces first, they'll tear off a lot easier. And then the smaller pieces and the seam allowance will just kind of like fall off for you. So we're just gonna pull this and then once we get this piece off, and then you'll notice after that, that this piece just comes right off really easily. Keep sewing house blocks until you have all the blocks that you need for the quilt. And just so you can see what they look like when they're finished, uh, this is what I call the large house block. And I wanted to point something out on the pattern too. Um, so that the pattern's not completely like repetitive just to give it a little more visual interest. For the large house and the tall house, there is a version one and a version two. And the difference between version one and version two is where the chimney is and where the door is. So on version two, it's a mirror image of version one. So you just wanna make sure when you're done that you've got your tall, your large house blocks, so you've got three of the large house blocks on that second row that are version one. And then as you move down your rows, um, you've got another row of blocks that are mirror image of that. If that like throws you off and you don't want to worry about version one and version two, you can just make them all version one. It doesn't even matter. You just, they're labeled on the pattern, which version it is. And the same thing with the tall house blocks, you have some with the doors on the right and some with the doors on the left. And that's just to give it a little more interest to the quilt. But it's totally up to you when you print it out. If you are worried about that, you don't have to do that. So you'll have your large house blocks, your tall house blocks, and your small house blocks. And just keep stitching until you've got all your blocks made. And then we'll go ahead and move on to the next row of the quilt. For more information about the quilt, the row along and everything, you can visit my blog at polkadotchair.com or you can also follow all of the links right below here to find out more.